Hey, what's going on? It's Joey Myers from the Hitting Performance Lab, and in this video, a part due to the bonus F words, free fall. In this video, this is more of an application of the free fall, whereas the last one talked about the theory and the philosophy behind why we create forward momentum or FOMO or linear momentum. We're going to talk about three things. The first idea we're going to toss around is what I use as a cue for my young hitters to be able to get the idea of how to do the free fall. Then the second one is a cue that I use to get them out of a bad habit of rushing the free fall or pushing off of the back foot, which we don't want to do. And then the last thing we're going to talk about is how far the fall should be. It's a frequent question that I get over email with the people who have purchased the truth about explosive rotational power. So let's go over the first thing, the cue that I use, and we'll finish up when we get into the final turn, which is the next F word, is I always talk about the front leg or the stride foot being the gas pedal and the back foot being the brake pedal. So in this particular video, we're going to talk about how the front foot is the gas pedal. We do not want to have any kind of push come from the back leg. Now we talked about in a previous video creating torque in that back hip so that we can help that, that backside spring through, but there is no push in the swing. We're not pushing off of our back leg that maybe a pitcher would do off the rubber. The pitcher would normally fall forward, but they might. some coaches teach that they at the end they push off of the rubber to get that little extra going. We aren't pushing with this. We want this to feel as, you want the body to feel as light as possible and the movement to be as simple as possible. So really all you're doing is once you get into your float and you start to fall forward, you're just, that's all it is. It's a fall forward. You're falling onto your front leg. <clears throat> the second thing that kids tend to do is once we get them into the gas pedal, once they understand that, okay, I gotta get some, give it some gas, which means from the front side, not the back side, we're not pushing off. But the second thing we talk about is that they tend to do it too quick, especially when they start to see a pitcher throw a ball at them and they're trying to get their timing. Because this, this swing is all based on timing. And the old way where hitters just stand there and, sit and hit off their back leg or so, so they think they're doing, their timing is last second, whereas here we got a little bit more time to build and load the body. And what I always tell my younger hitters and my older hitters is this meta metaphor of an archer. When an archer shoots a bow and arrow, when they're in competition trying to hit a bullseye, what you'll see is if this is the bow, and you'll see them pull the arrow back, everything before they let that go is very slow. And then once they let go, then the explosion happens. It just pops and that arrow accelerates into its target. Well, when we take our stride, when we go into our free fall, we want to make sure that we're smooth. The word I use is smooth. Be smooth in your fall. That doesn't mean pushing off and being herky-jerky. A lot of times I'll, I'll find my guys going, really trying to get out there real quick because they're trying, they see that ball coming at them and they're just falling forward and they don't, they don't have confidence yet that they, they'll have enough time to when they transfer into angular momentum that they're going to be able to get that barrel on the ball. They actually have more time where they think they don't have as much time. So I talk about the gas pedal being the front foot and then I talk about their transition into the angular momentum from linear when they start going to their turn as being smooth in the free fall. Then the last thing that we do is we make sure we set up feedback markers and you'll find some of the drills in the module 2 drill section. I use the Babe Ruth drill a lot with my kids and I have them, they basically stand with their feet almost together and then they, we, we set their, their markers out and they have to get to, the, they have to push enough gas to get to the front marker. Now the question is asked, well how far apart do the markers need to be? And what I've been using a lot lately is the length of their bat. So what you'll do is you'll set one marker. They'll, you'll get them in their, remember the three steps to a consistent stance. They'll set themselves up and wherever they're open, closed stance, whatever. You'll set a ball marker just on the inside of their back foot off, off towards the plate, maybe on the other side of the plate so they don't trip on it. You can also use tape, duct tape or something. You can tape a line on the inside of their back foot. So that's the first marker. Then what I do from there is I take their bat, I lay it down 
So the mark, the ball marker's here. I lay the bat down, and then I place two ball, or I take the ball and I place the second ball marker, the front marker, two balls in front of their bat. That's a, as a general rule is what we're is what we use as our feedback markers of how far their fall needs to be. And then what I'll do is I'll take the the T and I'll bring it either right at that marker or pull it back a little bit, maybe six inches, four to six inches behind that, fr that front marker so that we're, we're making sure we're making contact with the ball just inside that, that front foot. But in this video, we went over more of the application. You can go into the drills and fool around with those, but we talked about three things. We talked about how the front foot is the gas pedal and that we don't push off the back foot. We want to get that feeling of feeling light like we talked about in free fall part one, the unweighting principle. We talked about the second thing was to be smooth when we transition from our float into our free fall, that everything is smooth and we take our time to gather our body and turn it into a projectile missile. And then the last thing we talked about was how far the fall should be and how wide we should set those ball markers so that every single swing we take, we have those ball markers there and it can give us feedback as to are we getting to that, are we pushing enough gas, or then like in the next video we'll talk about are we skipping that back foot, are we taking the foot off the brake enough to where we're being effective and creating that linear into angular momentum. If you got any questions on this, please post them below the video, any comments. Other than that, make sure we're swinging smarter by moving better.